Good morning, everyone. We are so glad to have you here. If you'll kind of gather in so we can go ahead and get the program started this morning. What a great day for a groundbreaking, right? Thank you, thank you. We are so incredibly happy to have you here today. My name is Terry Attaway. I'm gonna welcome you today. I am the current um, board chairman, chairperson of Fort Worth Housing Solutions, and I'm honored to welcome you here today. With all the people that are here, um, you know, for the family, for, you know, I'm, it's funny, you know, they gave me talking points, but because of my um, personal experiences with Mr. Babers and the family, I'm probably just going to talk from my heart, as I usually do. But um, just wanted to just thank the family for being here and all the friends, everybody who had a connection to see Donald Babers. We all loved him. We miss him tremendously so much still to this day. And for, your, for the family, Ms. Sheila, I, I just can't even imagine, because if I miss him as much as I do, I know what it is like for you guys, right? And so we're praying for your peace even still today. I wanted to say that to you. We are so incredibly proud that we are able to come to you today naming this property after Mr. Babers, right? I can't even think of a, a better honor that we could do. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about uh, me and, and what we've done. First of all, first thing I want to do, I don't know how many of them are here, but I want to thank our board of commissioners of Fort Worth Housing Solutions, right? Um, I haven't seen everybody, but I know Dick Stinson is here. Dick, wherever you are, raise your hand. Okay, he's in the back back there. There's also um, Brittany Hall. There is Michael Ramirez. And your own Dr. Carlos Walker is also a part of our board. Thank you. I know, I know. You love him much, just like we do. And we could not do the things that we do along with the, um, uh-oh. Do you take care of that? Um, along with our staff, our incredible staff at Fort Worth Housing Solutions, led by Mary Margaret Lemons, who you'll hear from her. But um, we work together to get these things done, right? And I just wanted you to hear that from me because we sit behind the scenes. You may not always see us, but we are there month in, month out and sometimes more than once a month for different things that we do in order to make these, these things happen. So it is definitely a team effort led by our board, through our staff, our um, development folk, our president, and every person at Housing Solutions who is a part of what we do. I want to thank you, because we wouldn't get this done without you, right? All right. So as we talk a little bit about um, Stop 6 and how this came about, I just wanted to share that um, this has been a long time in the making. I want to thank um, Gina Bivens, of course, and our mayor here. And it's just so many things. And I'm, I'm just because I have the mic, I'm taking the liberty to do these things because we appreciate you so much. We don't get to talk to them every day. But when we're signing documents, we know who's behind what we do. Our HUD representatives, all the people that are very important to us. Um, Art, I know the, he's our, a PR person. He gave me a whole lot to say. This is really too much. I don't want to do all of that today. So I'm going to just thank you um, for being here. What we've done um, is only the beginning, guys. We still, you're going to see this. You'll see um, Hughes, too coming down the pipe and you already seen our senior citizen um, place that we already have open and running. We are so excited about the changes in Stop 6. Are you? Well, I guess. Yeah, right? And all I can say is it's about time, right? The citizens of this area deserve everything that's coming. I just want to say we love you so much, and we, we show that love by the work that we do every day. It's really about the community and about the residents that we serve. Anything we do, if you ever have a question, know that. You heard that from me. I've served as 
um, a board of commissioner member for 22 years. I've been chairman of the board for a dozen years. So this is it, it, it's just from the heart what we do, volunteer work and serious volunteer work. Not very many people can say that they've accomplished what we did. Our goal when I got on this board was to change the face of public housing. And I think we've done that, right? Um, we thank you very much, very much. If you are, were around in the beginning, it started with Ripley Arnold and all the things that went on with that. Since then, I am proud to say that we have properties in every city council district in this city. We work with all our municipal folk and they love us. We're great landlords. We manage our properties well. We manage our people well. And we're always going to do that. It's going to get better and better. One of the things when I came, because my personal background is real estate, affordable housing. So when I got here, I thought I never ever want to see a place where you can tell what the income of the people are, right? That's ridiculous. We never ever want to do that again. We have changed that. We want children to grow up together. We want people of mixed incomes to grow up together and be good citizens, made the, the adults to all work together no matter what income you are. It's not about that. It's about what kind of person you are, right? So that's what our people work on in our group that helps people even buy homes as well using their vouchers. We have um, Sonia Barnett who handles all the resident services that we do. Our goal is to help give people a hand up, right? And that's what we do day in and day out. So I just want to thank you again, welcome you here, um, and let us go forward. Right now we're going to have the invocation. Is, yes, is, yes, come on up. I'm sorry, I just wanted to be sure my person was here. Come on up with me now. How are you, Pastor Bowman? Yes, okay. So we're going to have Pastor Bowman come up and we're going to move on with the program, all right? Thank you very much. Good morning, shall we pray? Almighty God, we gather here today to dedicate and bless this new housing development, Babers Manor. We ask for your guidance and protection over all who will call this place home. May this community be filled with love, peace, and a sense of belonging. Let these homes be a refuge of comfort and a source of strength for all who enter. God, we pray for the builders, planners, and everyone involved in this project. May their work stand as a testament to their dedication and skill. We also ask for your blessings on the families and individuals who will live here that they may find joy, prosperity, and a deep sense of community. Grant us the wisdom to continue building not just structures, but lives enriched with compassion, understanding, and support for one another. May this place be a beacon of hope, shining brightly as a symbol of unity and togetherness. It's in your holy name we ask and we pray. Amen. Good morning, Fort Worth. How are we doing? So my name is Maddie Parker, and I am very pleased to be your mayor this morning. My first groundbreaking event was actually here in Stop 6 to celebrate but I call the renaissance of this wonderful community. When I served as chief of staff for Mayor Price and the city council, this was truly one of my favorite projects to work on as we tried to woo HUD to give us that housing choice grant. We would not be here today if it weren't for the magnificence of Mr. Donald Babers. This front row here, it represents his family, but I know that he is looking down on us quite proud of what we're doing, but he would not like the fact that his name was on a building. 
because that's not what he did this for. In the years I got to know Mr. Babers working alongside our Mayor Pro Tem, Gina Bivens, I was struck by his tenacity for change, the recognition that public housing would be different, and that you could completely transform communities with the right level of public-private partnership. And that's what this groundbreaking really represents today. On the program, you see logos, but behind those logos are individuals and people that believe in the community of Stop 6 and have listened intently to this community for years to understand what this groundbreaking really, truly does represent. When I think about how hard Gina has fought for her community in District 5, you should be so proud, Gina. Go out, give her a round of applause. Mayor Pro Tem Bivens serves as the dean on our city council. I'm very proud that she is my Mayor Pro Tem. If you know Gina well, you'll understand my next statement. Sometimes you look at Gina and you say, you say it because I can't, and only Gina can say it so well. Importantly, today represents truly a, work, a, a body of work that has gone beyond what any of us really anticipated. But I look out in this audience and I see the members of the East Side the members of Stop 6 that have been here for generations, begging and pleading for the city to pay attention and do their part. And I'm very proud to tell you we are finally stepping up, we are fulfilling our promises, and today's groundbreaking really does represent that. In closing, and before I turn it over to Mary Margaret Lemons and Gina Bivens, I want to say this. Across the country, cities are divided, there's quite a bit of turmoil and confusion about what the future holds, but I'm proud to tell you that is not the case in the city of Fort Worth. We are the 12th largest city with so much promise and opportunity, but you have to start with neighborhoods and the people that live in them. This will be a home for individuals that will transform their lives and generations to come. If you're a partner here today, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, because without you, we would not be here. If you see folks walking around with t name tags or logos, thank them for their partnership because they didn't have to be here either. God bless each of you. Thank you for loving the city of Fort Worth. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our Mayor Pro Tem and Council District 5 Representative, Miss Gina Bivens. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I need you to thank Mayor Parker for speaking up loudly and boldly last night at Fort Worth ISD Board of Directors, Board of Trustees meeting. Sure. If our children in Fort Worth ISD can't read, we're doomed. And so Mayor Parker has been, si has been sounding the alarm but when I heard her speak last night, I thought, okay, maybe now folk will get it, how important this is. But I want to tell you about Mr. Babers. Don Babers and I would have coffee every night at 1030 after the news shield. We'd be on the phone, plotting strategy, how to work around an obstacle, and how to bring housing to Stop 6 Texas. There was a period in Stop 6 from about 2006 to 2015, I think, where only not even 300 homes had been built. That's a decade. And that meant this community imploded upon itself. That's why you see, or you saw, burnt out houses that were allowed to remain, a Dairy Queen that caught fire in 1986, stood there until we demolished it in 2013, and all kinds of just disregard, disrepair, and disrespect. How can you get housing in an area where the area has been forgotten? Ramon Romero thought Booker T Street was an alley. That's just how it had been ignored. But Mayor Parker brings a spotlight to what must be respected, regarded and admired. And I will tell you, when Don and I would talk about Stop Six, it was with fire and passion. Now let me tell you why and how we got him. 
Don had been over this entire multi-state region for HUD, that's housing and urban development. And when I brought up the idea of getting him as a consultant, we got pushed back. So why wouldn't you want the guy who was over this multi-state region on your team when all he had to do is make a phone call to DC and say, hey, this is Don, this is cool. Well, we got over that and HUD kept coming. We got that $35 million grant from the Trump administration. I mentioned that because you need to know this is not political. We get money and take money from everybody, okay? Don and I would take Mary Margaret Lemons around and in her new role as heading the housing solutions team to kind of guide her into begging for money. I think after three minutes, after three visits, she got it and she was off looking for money, learning zoning, making sure there were no gaps that she didn't try to address. So I want you to know when Hurricane Katrina took place, that entire city's public housing stock was blown away. Nothing, gone. President Bush appointed Don Babers to go and lead the public housing rebuild. Let me tell you something mind-blowing. Can you imagine Maddie Parker being the mayor and the council of Fort Worth all by herself? Can you imagine that? Well, Don Babers was over the board of housing in New Orleans, and he was the chair and the board all in one person. Ain't that right, Sheila? All in one person, and that's because New Orleans was known to be so corrupt. But there was one man who was picked to lead that public housing rebuild. When people visited him in New Orleans, he wouldn't even go to lunch with Willis Johnson because he did not want people to think he was on the take. And so now we are on the take of all of his knowledge. And when you live or you visit people who get lucky enough to move to Babers Manor, I want them to know who my friend was because it is his knowledge, his connections, and overall his passion for this community that we have Cowan Place. Anybody seen Cowan Place? If you have, wave your hand. It's old stall cup in Rosedale. People were dying to get there. We're gonna have Hughes House. All that stuff you see on Rosedale, that's gonna be Hughes House. And Lou Bernardi, am I gonna see basketball designs in front of Hughes House? Yeah, we had to raise hell over that. Thanks for making that happen. And when you see Babers Manor, oh, it's gonna be on. But I need you to know how passionate Mary Margaret Lemons is because she could easily just sit back, do the cut and paste plan for public housing and be done. But no, she comes with passion that serves this community. And so I want, you're gonna hear from her, but I just want Sheila to stand and wave. I want you to meet Don Babers' widow. Turn around. Thank you, Sheila. I want you to meet Barbara Holston, who started this redesign of public housing. Barbara doesn't have a cane, so Barbara can stand. Stand up, Barbara. <laughs> Nothing happens overnight. And with that, I know I have said enough. Oh, God, one more thing. I had a reporter call me the other day from the Star Telegram. I want you to get that. The Star Telegram reporter asked me why I changed zoning in Stop 6. He said, do you think it was worth it? I told him, drive around, you tell me. See y'all later. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, friends. I'm so excited to be here. And I'm flipping like I'm going to use these notes. We all know I'm not. Um, I'm Mary Margaret Lemons. I have the honor of serving as president of Fort Worth Housing Solutions. And I got to follow a class act of Barbara Holston, who held this position for decades and started this work. So I'm proud to be continuous, continuing that legacy. We got here. It was not an easy road, but we are here this morning and we were able to honor Mr. B. I said it earlier to Ms. Babers, but thank you for sharing your husband with us. <laughs> he was um, appointed to difficult tasks in his life. 
So you heard about Katrina and being appointed at the Housing Authority of New Orleans. Um, on his resume, you might see some time over in the far east of Dallas doing some work with their city. We all know that's challenging. And then he got to work for Gina and I, which can be a handful. Um, and so we know that Mr. B had this quiet determination in every challenge that he approached. But he was able to gain consensus. And that is so important when you talk about being able to get both sides of the aisles together on an issue and get to a yes. And the choice neighborhood process is all about getting to a yes. And in 2019, this community stood up and said it's time. It's go time, Mayor. And so we applied for the grant, we won the grant, but it didn't stop. It wasn't just, you know, um, a one-time thing. We had hundreds of meetings. And all of them weren't puppy dogs and rainbows. We had to ha talk about hard things and we had to make hard decisions, but we did it together. We weren't doing this to the community or for the community, we were doing it with the community. And Mr. Babers was right there, this calm presence, keeping everybody sane and telling us to just keep the faith that it would happen. So he's an integral part of this becoming a reality. And we're so proud of the two projects that are already underway and open. Um, and breaking ground on this is just a continuation of the passion and dedication he had for housing. So it's aptly named. This was the toughest closing yet. I see lots of our partners in the room today, and I appreciate you showing up. Lenders, bankers, attorneys, um, architects, engineers, our city partners. This truly was team ball, and they got it across the goal line. But we used everything he taught us, and we persevered. And so dirt's gonna start turning, and in a few short months, we're gonna be able to welcome 80 families across the street into beautiful townhomes and garden-style apartments at affordable rents with amenities they deserve in a neighborhood that's being redefined. So we're standing here in one of our partners' space, so thank you, Boys and Girls Club, for allowing us not to be in the hot sun this morning. Yeah. And as you see some of our other partners in the room, this wouldn't have happened without funding from Hunt and Aetna, who's here. You might have heard about a workforce um, innovation and training center that's opening, a WITSE from CVS, and that's under construction in the neighborhood. This is the time for Stop 6. There's so many great things, and we couldn't be prouder um, to be here as Fort Worth Housing Solutions, the city, <laughs> representing Mr. B and everything he stood for. So thank you, Ms. Babers and his family for being here and allowing us to use his name. I get the pleasure of introducing um, my friend from our developer partner, Lou Bernardi from McCormick Baron Salazar, to give us the details on the development. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today to celebrate this uh, very significant groundbreaking and to, of course, honor the memory and the legacy of Don Babers. I also want to thank the Boys and Girls Club, the Eastside Boys and Girls Club, for for uh, hosting us today because yes, it is hot out there and um, we very much appreciate your kindness and your generosity to, to host us today. Our chairman, Richard Barron, sends his regards and his regrets for not being able to attend here today. Uh, he really uh, would have loved to be here. Uh, unfortunately, he could not make it. Uh, he and Don Babers have a history um, after Katrina in New Orleans. Uh, our company uh, worked very closely with Don uh, to help rebuild a few public housing uh, sites that were completely destroyed by Katrina and uh, help convert them into community mixed income housing for, for residents in New Orleans. So uh, we were very glad that Don was here in Fort Worth uh, to do everything that has already been said about him um, to help get this uh, grant awarded to, this, to the housing uh, solutions and to the city of Fort Worth and to allow this work to, to progress. Um, today does ma mark a major milestone for the Stop 6 community. This is the third phase of the Stop 6 Choice Neighborhood Housing Plan, uh, groundbreaking, and um, it's three, three down, a few more to go. Uh, and we're all committed to making sure that that happens. As Mary Margaret said, Babers Manor will offer 80 new homes to Stop 6 residents, uh, as well as other Fort Worth residents who are looking perhaps at uh, joining this community 
uh, and I'm sure they will, they will be welcome to this new mixed income community. Um, this development is crucial for Stop 6 neighborhood and for Fort Worth as a whole. Uh, everyone knows that housing is expensive. Uh, it's very difficult for working families to be able to afford housing that's uh, new and sustainable uh, in a community where they want to be. And I think that it's important that we're working together collaboratively with so many partners here in the city of Fort Worth and beyond the city to make sure that we're creating those communities where people want to be, want to live, want to see their families and children grow. Um, as Richard would say, uh, as he says so many times, it's all about the families and the children and creating opportunities for them to achieve their dreams and their goals. And I think that's why we're happy to be involved in these, this work across the country and particularly here in Fort Worth. Um, none of this would be possible without the collaborative effort of all of our partners. Mary Margaret mentioned so many. Uh, it does take a village. Uh, so bear with me because I do want to acknowledge some of the people who have been able to join us today. Um, they worked very, very hard over the course of many, many months. As Mary Margaret said, this was a tough one to get over the finish line, but we did. Um, and it's uh, due to the efforts of many, many people that are behind the scenes and, and work very hard. Of course, our partner, Fort Worth Housing Solutions, Mary Margaret Lemons and her team, we're very grateful to be working with you and, and, and look to continue that, the, those efforts. From McCormick Baron Salazar, Monique Chavoya, Antonio Ramon, who are here as project managers leading the way on the ground and uh, working very closely to, to make sure that we had that closing. Our design team, RPGA Design Group from Fort Worth, uh, I know that Dustin Higgins is here. Um, our lenders, Mason Josephs, I see you all in the back row back there. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Backman, Matt Corin, uh, who worked very closely with the HUD Fort Worth office, uh, particularly with B. Lloyd, Lisa Richardson, and Trina Stewart, thank you very much. Uh, from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, as mentioned, thank you, Candice Valenzuela, to your team, and also the uh, Choice Neighborhood team in D.C. for helping us get through this, through this process. The City of Fort Worth, uh, a major partner in all of these efforts, I don't see Fernando Costa here, um, but if he were here, uh, I would really say thank you to Fernando, uh, who has been with us since the beginning, uh, has been our touch point along the way, and has uh, really rallied the troops at various city departments to help us get much done, beginning with Cowan and Use House, and today, Babers Manor, and certainly for the phases that we have ahead of us. Uh, our investor team, Hunt Capital is here. Uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll let John talk about John, uh, Aetna and, and Hunt and CBS. A general contractor, GMA Construction, represented here today, Cornelius Griggs, Cornelius Griggs, Tori Barrett, John Adams, along with Jessica Andriski and then many of their other team members are here. They will be building Babers Manor. The, they will, they will, they've already started. As you can, if you've driven by the site, you see uh, equipment on the site and they're moving things along. Um, I also think it's important that we recognize the former residents of Cabell Place uh, and Stop 6 residents and all of the stakeholders who continue to be engaged with us and other partners in the community. Thanks, thank you for your thoughtful input, your participation and your support. And uh, all I ask is that you stick with us because there's still a lot of work to do um, as we go forward. Um, finally, um, I, I got a chance to meet Don Babers when I started to work here with Fort Worth Howden Solutions and the city and other, and other community stakeholders. Um, got to know him a little bit, and um, it's really a pleasure uh, to, to get to know Don and to see him in action. Really, uh, everything that's been said about him is so true. Uh, the values that, held, that were held by Mr. Babers throughout his life and his career in public service truly align, I think, perfectly with our collaborative mission here to provide affordable housing and to help build communities. As we gather here today, let us keep in mind we're not just constructing buildings, we're building a future, we're building a community, and a lasting legacy in honor of Mr. Babers. 
His dedication to his community should continue to inspire us all. And I know Don would be very proud of what we will accomplish together here today and, and in the future. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to introduce Esther Shint, who's the president and CEO of Urban Strategies. Here. Good morning. Um, I'd like to start off with a, a, a message that was written in June of 2012 after Mr. Babers announced his retirement. At the time, HUD Secretary Sean Donovan said, during his career, Don has demonstrated a passion and commitment for helping people. From improving substandard housing conditions for public housing residents throughout Texas, to shouldering some of the heaviest loads in the wake of Hurricane Katrina along the Gulf Coast, Don has always been the consummate public servant. His presence and his interpersonal skills have made a real difference in the lives of countless families. I could only hope for that kind of message from a senior level of a cabinet uh, upon my retirement. And I hope that the work that we are doing here, um, uh, it's honoring him and I, and I hope that he is proud. I had the opportunity and the honor of meeting Mr. Babers many, many years ago in Katrina, uh, working in the Magnolia Public Housing Community. And what I remember is he was a man who was very much interested in impact and partnership and leveraging all the good things that were already taking place on the ground. So to that end, I wanted to share some of the impact that has already taken place as a result of Mr. Baber's work, as a result of the Stop Six Choice Neighborhoods and all the wonderful things that have been happening here. And I have, my team sent me a full on page. I'm going to give highlights because we could be here for a really long time because there are a lot of really great things. So. The creation of a multi-generational reading program at Cowan Place where youth and adults get to read together to support literacy. There's a new maternal health support program that focuses on prenatal and postnatal care for ages zero to three. Two former Cowville residents have become homeowners and are now adamant volunteers in the community. 98% high school graduation rate. A 54% increase in household income, 50% increase in employment rate since 2020, with a retention rate of 92%. These are the, just the incredible results that are, as, that are because of a group of really strong partners. And as it was said earlier, you know, you see them on the back of your program, but there are some that are not on the program that I have to recognize today. They're the United Way of Tarrant County, Just By Chance Youth Empowerment, Campfire, Lip Gloss for Love, ABC Christian Learning Center, Child Care Associates, and the Fort Worth ISD. These are organizations that are focused on cradle to college career, economic opportunity, on physical, mental, and behavioral health that have been stalwart partners making certain that the quality of lives of families living here improves. And finally, I cannot go without thanking the Fort Worth Housing Solutions team, Mary Margaret, Sonia, Lachelle. I mean, we have a really special partnership here that if, if without this unique and special partnership, these outcomes would just not be possible. And I get to stand up here, you know, every few months and cut a ribbon, turn some dirt, when there are a lot of people that make this work look easy and look good. And I, I'm not one of those people, right? I've got a team, a wonderful local team here led by Latanya Copelandberry. Just love the, what, the work she's doing here is just fantastic. Donovan Duncan, our executive vice president. You know, these are the, these are the organizations and the individuals that are here on the ground day to day with finally the most important, important group of people here and that's the residents of Stop Six, who without your faith and your commitment to ensuring that this covenant between public and private partners becomes a reality for you, without your dedication, this would not be possible. And I hope that that 
is what honors Mr. Baber's legacy, his memory, and the work that he has done. Thank you so much. Um, and now I would like to introduce Mr. John, and I, I don't want to butcher your name because I'm a, for the first time today, Mr. John Heerwagen, who's the Vice President of Sales and Client Management for Aetna Public Sector and Labor. Thank you. Well, good morning. This is such an incredible turnout. I'm so excited to be here. I'm John Herwagen. I get to serve as Vice President of Sales and Client Management for Aetna, a CVS company in their public sector here in Texas, and I'm honored to be here. I do have to say that this is probably the first and only time that I was genuinely excited about getting outside and shoveling some dirt in the mid-August heat, though. So, uh, but such a great reason to be here. I want to start off by acknowledging just the incredible amount of time, effort, and work that goes into taking a project like this from the development stage to the construction stage. So a huge congratulations to Fort Worth Housing Solutions and their partners on such an incredible achievement that's going to benefit so many in the community and be such a, uh, pay such a well-deserved respect to Mr. Baber. So congratulations again to Fort Worth Housing Solutions and their partners. Now, I've been to a lot of these throughout my career. I've been fortunate to participate in several of them. And there's probably a handful of you in the audience that are saying, why is CVS and Aetna an insurance company and a pharmacy company at an affordable housing groundbreaking? And I get it. But the reality is, as the, as the nation's leading health solutions company, we recognize that having safe, quality, and affordable housing um, is among the greatest barrier to achieving good health for us today. You know, if you think about it, when somebody's struggling to put food on the table or keep a roof over their head, health goes to the back burner. It has to. And that's the reason that we look to partner with developers and communities who share a similar vision, that everybody should have a beautiful and affordable place to call home with the support that they need around them. Exactly. Um, you know, we, we are so grateful to be able to invest $17 million into Babers Manor through Hunt Capital Partners and alongside the other partners see this vision come to life. <laughs> Fort Worth's important to us. It's important to me because it's home, but it's important to us as a company as well. And that's clearly demonstrated by all of my colleagues that are here celebrating today that participated throughout this entire process this far. So I'd ask those from CVS and Edna, if you just want to shoot up a hand and wave or stand, we'd greatly appreciate it. <laughs> At CVS and Edna, we truly believe healthier is happening in Fort Worth, and we look forward to continuing to support the Stop 6 neighborhood. Um, in closing, on behalf of all of those individuals that just waved um, and stood up, I'd like to say thank you again for allowing us to participate. We're so thrilled to see the Stop 6 Neighborhood Transformation Plan continue to come to life. We want to congratulate all the partners that have been involved, and we truly look forward to being here to welcome and support the future residents of Babers Manor as, as we open up. And so with that, I'd like to say thank you, God bless, and I'm going to introduce Ms. Candace Val Valenzuela, who is the Southwest Regional Administrator of the HUD Department. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very hard for me not to be emotional, even though I am one of the few people up here who have not had the pleasure of personally meeting Don Babers. But as HUD's regional administrator, uh, representing Acting Secretary Todman in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and New Mexico, of course, as a proud Texan, I get to stand in the footprint of his work. I get to work alongside people whose lives he's touched. I have also been personally touched by the work of HUD in this region from a very young age. So uh, it is a deep honor to be here 
And before I, I get going, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge the HUD staff here today. There are many of us. If you all would mind standing, I would really love to show you all off. The folks from HUD are here not because they've been forced to be here. Uh, they're here because of the quality of the work that Don Babers did. They're here uh, because his 42 years of service to the Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, was significant and exceptional. And I want you all to know that. Now, I've uh, had the pleasure of being at many uh, events to celebrate the accomplishments of, of this state, and it's been particularly special to be here in Fort Worth. Uh, so I, I want to acknowledge three amazing public service servants and the folks that work so hard with them. Uh, Mayor Maddie Parker. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem J Gina Vivens. <laughs> And of course, Mary Margaret Lemons. They are true partners with HUD, uh, and they are true partners with the community. And I, I want to take a second to emphasize what brought about the funding here. In addition to um, the incredible partners, uh, actually not in addition to, because of the incredible partners, because of the members of community, we have this Choice Neighborhoods Grant. The Choice Neighborhoods Initiative Program starts with, an, starts with a planning grant and then goes to an implementation grant. It is incredibly, incredibly competitive. It requires literal years, literal years of planning, of public input. And when I say public input, uh, it's not the three people who show up routinely to city council. Uh, there are more than that, I'm sure. But it is everybody living in that community affected by the construction, by the, the renovation, by the movement of dirt. They have their hands and hearts all over this process. And that does not happen without effective leadership. So the investment made here wasn't because the federal government waved a magic wand and came down and just tossed the money out. It was because Don Babers decided that he wanted to invest in the community where he was born. It's because Mary Margaret Lemons, the city of Fort Worth, the county of Fort Worth, the partners here wanted to see Stop 6 be what it once was, a thriving community of primarily black people. And I want to just say that I am so proud of everyone in this room who has been putting in years of work to make this happen. So I just want you to give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Last, but certainly not least, I want to thank you, Sheila. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. I've only been regional administrator for a couple of years now. I have not devoted my life to HUD in the way that Don has. But I have to tell you, when you are all over five states, uh, when you are wrapping your arms around a community this, this fantastic, this wonderful, um, you cannot do it alone. I have a, a five-year-old and a nine-year-old son and a husband at home. Uh, and this is full-time work for them, on top of them living their own lives. And so I know that I could not do anything I do without the love and support of my family. And so this, what we are seeing coming up in Fort Worth, but things that you may never see going across five states, because I have talked to mayors from five states, and they asked me if I had the honor of knowing him, and I had to unfortunately answer no. But I can tell you that they think of him, that they, they appreciate him, that they honor him. So I want to thank you for making this work possible. Thank you so much, Sheila. <laughs> Thank you. 
And with that, um, it is my absolute honor to introduce Ms. Valasia Mongoler, the daughter of Don Babers, who I know personally understands this investment as well. Thank you so much, Valasia. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you all so much for being here today. On behalf of the family, we really appreciate this. Um, I am Thalacia Mobilaire. I am Dawn's oldest daughter. So I'm actually going to be speaking on behalf of my mother. So this is a last minute adjustment here. A true man of distinction, a sage leader, a mentor, a muse, a devoted husband, a proud protective father, and a doting brother are a few words that sum up, sum up the magnitude of my father's character. I took it. Mr. Baber's enormous legacy is a void that will be impossible to be filled or replaced. But, Anyone that knew and met him can no doubt say that they have been truly honored and blessed to have shared time and space and crossed paths with such a noble spirit. <laughs> My father was born to the proud parentage of Maggie and George Babers on June 23, 1946, on the north side of Fort Worth. Don matriculated through Milton L. Kirkpatrick Elementary, Middle, and High Schools. He went on to study and achieve his Bachelor of Arts in History and Sociology from the University of Texas at Arlington. From 1965 to 1969, where he was one of the first African-American students, where he was admitted to the campus post-desegregation. While he was there, he and 12 other jewels chartered the devastating Zeta Chi chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, Inc. on December 22, 1969, paving the road for future men of distinction to cross over and form a bonded brotherhood that can never be broken. With a degree in hand and a heart full of passion to help the people, my father was offered an opportunity to fulfill his lifelong dream of working in the public sector of the government with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. In June of 1970, he started with HUD as an intern working in Fort Worth office. He was then transferred to Little Rock, Arkansas from 1971 to 1975 to work as an equal opportunity specialist, where he then became the director of the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity. As fate would have it, he was transferred back to his hometown of Fort Worth, where he held numerous managerial positions and would later go on to manage the Dallas office of HUD between 1975 through 2005. With Hurricane Katrina, the HUD secretary appointed Mr. Babers as recovery advisor, chairman of the board of the Housing Authority of New Orleans, in which he oversaw the Herculean task of restructuring and reorganizing New Orleans' big four public housing developments, which were deemed to be unlivable by Hurricane Katrina. Mr. Babers tirelessly worked in New Orleans for four years to ensure that those, were dis that those who were displaced would be provided modern and safe housing. He was up against formidable conditions in a highly charged environment at that time, but his pragmatic leadership style and altruistic nature for the greater good of the people allowed him to form dynamic partnerships between federal, state, city agencies, officials, legislators, private and nonprofit organizations, residents, and the national media. In 2006, his actions in New Orleans and his distinguished track record earned him the presidential rank for meritorious executive, the highest award a career federal citizen civil service can receive. Mr. Babers was also instrumental in helping several tenants win class action housing discrimination lawsuits in East Texas in his tenure. In 2010, Mr. Babers was tapped by HUD Secretary Sean Donovan to serve as HUD's Southwest Regional Director for Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, 
New Mexico, and Oklahoma, which entitled him to oversee the delivery of HUD programs and services to communities and evaluate their effectiveness. Mr. Baber served in this capacity until he retired after 42 years of faithful service in June of 2012 with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. As you can imagine, retirement was far from Mr. Baber's plans. In late June of 2012, he used his cumulative years of housing know-how and conceived the Babers Group Incorporated, which was his way of providing expertise to the communities of Fort Worth and Dallas at large to aid in disaster preparation and disaster recovery, as well as speaking engagement, which he looked forward to. Mr. Babers was an esteemed member of the Dallas Realtor Lending Committee, the Dallas Board of Realtors, and the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, amongst others. Spiritually, he grew up in the historic Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church under the patronage of the great Albert E. Chu. My father served proudly as chairman of the Deacon Board as well as on the Finance Committee. Socially, he was an archon in the Delta Mu Boule chapter of Sigma Pi fraternity, as well as a lifelong member of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. From the Babers family, having this structure named after him that many will call their home speaks volumes to the impact that he had on the community. It is truly prolific and very fitting that his love and passion for everyone to have affordable housing must live on in the legacy of Babers Manor. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so meaningful. I get to do two, two last things before we go outside and turn some dirt. And one of those is to recognize my staff at Fort Worth Housing Solutions. I have about 100 people that house 35,000 people every day, and they do it with a big heart. And my name got thrown around, but I'm really uncomfortable with that because these people are the heart of our agency. So if you're with FWHS, could you please stand and wave? Brian Dennison, Sonia Barnett, and Lachelle Goodrich were integral in making this, this project come to life. So you guys deserve a huge round of applause. This wouldn't have happened but for you. And now I get to give some money. Normally I'm taking money because I need money to build my affordable housing, but we want to be able to share a little bit with our partners. Um, so my friends from the Boys and Girls Club, Susan and Shakita, and then UTA, we have a scholarship that was in Mr. Baber's name that we're gonna give a check to. So we're gonna do a check presentation on the stage and we're gonna go outside and turn some dirt. Here we go, ready, ready. 